Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we're translated and localized for the very first time. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including the original Fire Emblem game coming to Switch. And then on Thursday, Mario Month concludes with your Mario memories. Mark, can you even believe that we are, we're almost there? I can't. I cannot believe that we're at the end of Mario Month. It feels a little bit like uh, when you're a kid and you're anticipating Christmas. And the anticipation yeah. is almost better than the real thing. But the only difference is that I am sure that the end of Mario Month is not going to be a disappointment. Mm, you were never sure if Christmas might end up being a disappointment? <laughs> you never know. You never yeah. know. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if, like on Christmas, you've been peeking under the tree to see any of the uh, Mario memories that we've got uh, all, all lined up. We have got an, a, a wonderful resource of memories from you. Thank you so much, everyone, for emailing in your Mario memories. You have until I don't, I've midnight tonight, the end of the day. I don't know. <laughs> We're saying October 27th, which is today, Tuesday. Get your memories into us by emailing us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail to be included, we've got so many good memories. I would hate for your memory to be left out of the lineup. It's going to be a good show. Mark, we may not even need to prepare our own Mario memories, but we will. We wouldn't want to leave anybody hanging, you know, that was eagerly anticipating our Mario memories. I don't know. I don't know if those, such people exist, but if they do, mom, if you're mm. listening to this, my mom, then uh, don't worry. I'll have something to say. I promise. Uh, I don't think my parents listen to this. <laughs> uh, speaking of things my parents don't do, would you like to borrow my copy of Sonic Forces? It's actually maybe speaking of things that no one can do because my copy of Sonic Forces is missing, lost in transit. Thank you, USPS. It's not their fault. I, I packaged it poorly. Um, it popped out of the envelope, and now it is uh, missing in action. We will never find it again. The Sonic Forces borrowing program will return in some capacity, and we will announce that capacity on next week's show, right? Yes, Mark? that's right. We, uh, we promised ourselves mm -hmm. and the world that that would be That's the right. case. Now, would you say that we have made much progress into determining what the new program entails? Nobody can fact check this, so I'm going to say we've made a lot of progress. That is wonderful and smart. Um, if you want to get on the list to be a part of whatever this program is, you need to email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com gmail uh, and supply us with a, a mailing address where we can send you whatever this thing is that the... Uh, program take i mean maybe just hold off for a week uh, this is part of the show part of the running show but wait until you know what this thing is uh it'll be good I, or at least not bad um all right uh what else we got here oh uh let's just move into uh voting stuff we're a week away from the end of the election um which uh, i i realized that we've been saying that the election is coming up we are in the election you can vote right now in most states, all states, uh, if you can vote by mail, you can vote by mail. If you can uh, vote early, um, just make sure that you uh, know what the process is for that and that you are uh, probably registration is uh, maybe a little bit too late at this point. Depends um, on where you but live. But a lot of states have same. Yeah, a lot of states have uh, same day registration for, for voting. So just make sure you understand uh, what it is, how you do it, and then make a plan to do it. Um, Mark, any other advice on uh, getting ready to vote? No, no. Just, uh, yeah, check your registration. You can go to IWillVote.com. Make sure you know where you're going to be voting, how you're going to be voting. Rope in your friends. Do it all together. Make it a big, like, safe social distancing. I don't know. You have a plan. Make sure your yes. friends are voting. And then vote for Joe Biden. 
Yeah, vote for Biden Harris. And then also, look, that's a very exciting, very easy, very obvious thing to vote for because it means maintaining our democracy and, you know, warding off uh, fascism for a little while. Um, but there are going to be a bunch of other things on uh, your ballot that you should know what you're voting for. So do your research. There are probably some voting guides that uh, align with your values. Uh, you know, do a little bit of work, figure it out, and vote. Um, Mark. Before we move into what we've been playing this week, we have an email from Anthony. Uh, Anthony writes, hey guys, uh, recently you asked if anyone likes video pinball games. Mark, I think I struck a nerve with this question. <laughs> this is the second email we've gotten uh, regarding pinball video games. Anthony says, I do. I love them. Just thought I'd tell you about a few of my favorites. I really liked this, uh, I really liked this one on NES called Pinball Quest. It's pinball with some RPG elements. It's kind of tough and the physics are wonky, but it's still fun to play. I, of course, love both Pokemon pinball games. Uh, the, the GBA one is probably my favorite. Uh, I'm only one away from a full Pokedex on the GBA Pokemon pinball. Uh, also, uh, also, I have a pitch for an Animal Crossing musical. What? That I think you guys overlooked in your musicals episode, if you're interested. Uh, Anthony, we are interested. Yeah, uh, send 100%. That along, please. Um, never... Look, if you're uh, going to... To tell us anything about a musical uh you should just go ahead and skip the asking for permission uh process and just do it uh thanks for all the content you guys keep me entertained while i clean classrooms at work take care anthony uh thank you anthony it is good to know that uh, you know i sort of tossed off the uh um mario pinball land um when we were talking about mario spinoffs the other week um but it is good to know that there's uh someone who's interested in 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 those games yeah, and I've never heard of this uh, like RPG ish pinball game for the NES. So I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I, I will have to look into that as well. Um, I, it also makes me I'm will confess that I am now curious about the Pokemon pinball games. Like, do I need to look into those too? I I remember I, playing. I think I played one on Game Boy Color and liked it a lot. Hmm. All right. Okay. Well, so we'll th thank you, Anthony. We will now do our own investigation. <laughs> All right, Mark. Uh, let's get into what we've been playing this week. Uh, you could argue I've been playing too much Super Mario Picross. Um, every time I think I'm like beating the last set of puzzles, um, the game just like scrolls down and is like, nope, here's like three more sets of 12 puzzles. Oh, wow. And I just keep going. I just keep going. Um, I'm a, a little bit amazed at how much content is in this game. Um, I don't know why I figured it would be less than a modern Picross game, but it seems like there is just, it's, it's like a never ending font of uh, new Picross for me to play. I'm sorry if I asked this previously and forgot the answer, but are the puzzles all Mario related or are they not at all Mario related? Not at all Mario related. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't really have anything new to report um, on that front. I did spend a little time playing um, a couple of the demos that we've been talking about recently, um, including the Yoku's Island Express demo. Ooh, um, speaking of pinball stuff. Speaking of pinball stuff, uh, and I I enjoyed it quite a bit. It is a, a game that I think I will probably. Um, like loop back around to and buy next time it is on sale. Um, twenty seems like kind of a lot for that experience, but uh, you know, may, may, maybe it's not. But if I can get it for like ten or fifteen or something, I'm I'm definitely gonna dive in. Um, music super chill. Uh, and I found that like navigating that map, um, with the pinball mechanics was um fun. I know you found it uh, a little frustrating, uh, and I could see where it can also be that. Um, but I, I enjoyed um, what, what I was playing with it. Uh, I also played the Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories demo. One thing to note uh, about both these demos is that they are both uh, really short. Um, mm. that, Pikmin, that Pikmin 3 Deluxe demo that Nintendo put out uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, pretty meaty. You can probably spend two, two and a half hours uh, playing through that demo. Both of these I was uh, kind of done with uh, after maybe like 11 or 12 minutes. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, but so Kingdom Hearts uh, Melody of Memories uh, is uh, an interesting concept. And when like I got into the zone, this is the uh, Kingdom Hearts um, rhythm game. Um, and when like I got into the zone, it felt like a, an actual like rhythm experience. Um, that's when it actually felt like kind of fun to do. 
um, it definitely made me wish that I was familiar with the music at all. Mm -hmm. And like Mm -hmm. that it was like, you know, actually hitting my emotions as I was playing these, uh, these pieces of music. But like, I just don't, um, the like four tracks that, uh, that come with the demo, um, are all just, you know, from, from the game and not like Disney related. Um, but there are a lot of like weird effects and a lot of different ways to play it. Um, you can do just like single button mode where it's like purely just about rhythm. Um, and then there's sort of like a, a base mode and then there's like a complicated mode. And and when you set it on complicated, there are so many button prompts like coming towards you as like your characters are running down the highway. Um, and it can be overwhelming uh, real fast. Was there a boss battle as part of the demo? No, I, or if there was, I didn't access it. Oh, okay. Um, well, just because I'm so curious how boss battles work. I guess we'll just have mm. to wait. The game's out in, I think, a couple of weeks, right? So probably don't have to wait too long. Yeah. What have you been playing, Mark? I've been, still been plugging away at Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, my thoughts on the game haven't really changed. I think it's... I Look, I'm about to... Once I finish Sunshine, I will start playing Galaxy. So it has been a long time since I played the Galaxy games. So maybe once I get there, I will change my mind. But Sunshine... Mario is so much fun to control. Like, I love the controls of Mario in this game. I think he's super acrobatic and fast. Um, I I don't know. I I really like Sunshine. I get all the complaints. I totally understand it. But I love, like, hanging out on Isle Delfino. I love, like, the colors. I love the music. I love the world. Um, I'm, I'm all in on Sunshine. Uh, now, you, it sounds to me like you keep backing down from a slightly more combative stance. Um, because you said I'm about to play Galaxy, so I might change my mind, and then you just go, "I like Sunshine." I think you want to say that it is the best game in that collection <laughs> or the best three. No, mar- no, like, I, it sounds to me like you want to start something. I don't know that that's true. I think um, uh, well, I'm comparing Mario's movement in Super Mario Sunshine to Mario 64, yeah. and I think Mario's movement in Mario 64 is bad. But I think like that he has like. Like, I don't know that I took advantage of, like, his full move set in Sunshine. Yeah. Or, no, sorry, in 64, you know, like, I know that there are, like, combos and things you can do, um, like, the long jump and, like, that sort of stuff that don't exist in Sunshine. But what, what I, where I'm hedging my bets a little bit is that I think that Mario's controls and his, like, the way he moves in Sunshine is better than Mario 64. And what I'm prepared to say almost is that it is his like best move set in that tr- in that like collection of games but i haven't yeah. played galaxy for so many years that like i don't really have a great memory of how he controls in galaxy so i'm hedging my bets cuz maybe once i play that game i'll change my mind uh, yeah I, I i will be interested to find out uh i actually uh you know i'm realizing now that i haven't played any of uh galaxy in this collection i've just been watching sarah play um so it it might be like my memory of how he actually controls uh might be uh you know a, a little bit uh skewed or uh rose tinted by nostalgia. Um so I I am eager to find uh to to hear your impressions. Uh how far are you in Super Mario Sunshine? I am not super far. I would say that I'm like 30 stars or shines in at this point. So still yeah. a ways to it, go. It, I- I feel like they, they take a while, right? It takes a while to get shines. Yeah, I'm uh, not, like, great at the game. And you might argue that's because the game is not good. <laughs> and so, but, like, uh, yeah, like, I die a bunch or I have to, like, restart stuff or I get really high or I get really far in the platforming and I and fall, fall and I down. have to start yeah. over. Um, so it takes me a long time to get shines, but I enjoy my time in it. Um, all right. Well, that's what we've been playing this week. Let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Tomorrow, October 28th, Wednesday, Oceanhorn 2, Knights of the Lost Realm is released. Uh, now, this is wild. Uh, Oceanhorn, if you will recall, is a uh, like Zelda-like that very much borrowed the um, like aesthetic of Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, um, while also being just like a, a sort of traditional top-down 2D Zelda-style um, game. Uh, Z- uh, Oceanhorn 2 is the same thing, but with a slightly more like grown up look to it, almost a Twilight Princess sort of uh, vibe to it, <laughs> but a but a 3D game. So it's like they made oh, both a 2D Zelda 
and a 3D Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's still, I mean, it, it is still likely a game that neither of us will, will pick up uh, in any capacity, but it's just, it's neat to see the uh, sort of uh, homages following the same sort of evolutionary path. Yeah, that is really funny. On October 29th, Thursday, um, Wallachia, Reign of Dracula is releasing. Now, you may ask yourself, is this a Castlevania game or a Castlevania-like game? Uh, and it seems like no. It seems like the answer is no. <laughs> um, that it is more, has more in common gameplay-wise with like a, um, like a Sunset Riders um uh oh. like a sort of side scrolling arcade um s- like shooter slasher kind of thing um but in the setting of a castlevania like um so look if you're interested in what appears to be well you know what it actually there's also a little bit of like ghosts and goblins to what i've seen of it um th- in that it seems like it is uh difficult and, <laughs> <laughs> and that uh you'll die a lot um, but it, you know, it seems like a, a Halloween appropriate, um, game and I, I don't really, there aren't a bunch of games on switch that are, um, you know, like Halloweeny or monstery, except for the thing that you're about to bring up. Well, uh, yes. But before I do that, the one thing I want to say about, uh, Wallachia is that I, for, for whatever reason, associate that with, uh, Castlevania and, but then when I Googled it, it's like, oh, no, this is a real or is a real, like, geographic location yeah. in Romania. So nobody, no one game, like, owns uh, well, the term Wallachia. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a real thing in addition to also being the setting for uh, Castlevania. Especially the, I feel like it's said all the time in the Castlevania Netflix series. Like, yeah, I think that's the association that I have with Castlevania. Um, but yeah, the, also on October 29th, this is not really a game releasing per se, but uh, Monster Prom XXL, which is a like monster dating sim that uh, I played when it released on Switch and Patrick had played previously on PC. It's super fun, really, really funny writing. Um, a physical edition is going up for pre-order on October 29th from Super Rare Games. You can start pre-ordering at 11 a.m. Pacific time on the 29th. And if you're interested, you will want to be trying to pre-order at that time because this is a very limited edition. Um, the, the game will be offered with a standard release and a collector's edition. The standard release is limited to 5,000 copies and the collector's oh. edition is only 1,500 copies. Why would they do this to us? <laughs> the, um, the collector's edition includes a steelbook case, 68-page full-color hardback yearbook with tons of artwork and stickers, temporary oh, awesome. tattoo, a collector's pin badge, 10 physical instant camera photos. Um, that's like a convention in the game. A collectible driving license, high school diploma, and two packs of training cards. So if you <laughs> this are is incredible. really into the world of Monster Prom XXL, that sounds like a really fun package. Uh, Monster Prom, a great game, uh, amazing writing, super fun. Um, yeah, uh, what wh- what a great game, and what a what a fun like collection of stuff to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. And then on Friday, October thirtieth, Pikmin Three Deluxe is released for the Switch, and sure is Pixel Puzzle Makeout League is also releasing on the Switch eShop. Okay, so Pixel Puzzle Makeout League <laughs> is. <laughs> It follows in the same sort of vein as Murder by Numbers, which is that it is a uh, you know visual novel of some form uh, combined with Pit Cross, um, and where Murder by Numbers was, of course, a murder mystery set in uh, 1980s Hollywood. Um, the Pixel Puzzle Makeout League is like a superhero romance uh, uh, visual novel but with uh, Picross elements. So you know I'm interested in this. Mark, yeah. you know that I'm interested in this. That is, um, you know, just like Murder by Numbers was made, like it was a game that was almost specifically made for us, uh, Pixel Puzzle Makeout League. That is a hilarious premise for a puzzle game. I'm all in on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the, the real uh, game here sort of, uh, you know, uh, blocking out the sun is, of course, Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Um, that's that I've, I'm to the point now where I'm definitely going to pick it up. Um, and we'll probably pick it up, uh, on, on Friday. I'm excited to play Pikmin. 
Uh, Mark, where are you with Pikmin? I I, I don't know. Like I, <gasps> even, I've even had a hard time like uh, getting myself to want to download the demo. Uh, mm. I mean, you know, when you're playing the best running Mario game, um, or the Mario game where Mario is running the best, you understand the sure. point I'm trying desperately to make. Uh, I haven't found the interest to play the Pikmin Three Deluxe demo, but it's something I definitely need to do. Um, because I'm, I'm wondering if like, once I actually try it, if I'm going to be like hooked. All right. Well, we will report back on it on the next time we, when do we do this again? Next (laughs) Tuesday. (laughs) And then on uh, October 31st, a rare Saturday release, um, to the Switch eShop. If you're looking for another scary, um, Halloween type game, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, which is a, um, Five Nights at Freddy spinoff game is available on switch starting on saturday is this game also spooky or is it actually a pizzeria simulator i think it is both i think you oh. like play as like a franchisee and y- so you have to do like set up you have your, to manage the books you have to yeah like <gasps> all that kind of stuff but then also Profit margins at are night, so thin on restaurants yeah yes um so there are lots of scary things happening in the pizz- pizzeria simulator very good. All right. Uh, those are the new releases. Let's close this up. And now it is time for a regular segment on our show. It is time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for four minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So for the duration of one performance, 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. This is, of course, our last 433 for October, which means this is our final spooky topic. Topic number five, we are ranking the best-selling chocolate Halloween candies in america mark where did you get this list from i got this list from some website that basically what they did is they compiled Uh, total sales of these candies and then said these are america's 10 favorite so okay the uh i i think it's fair to say that like because they took like the sales for the entire year and then were like this is America's favorite, but we're going with it. So this is the order of the of sales, and then we will use this to rank quality, I think, is what yeah. we are mm-hmm. attempting to do. So number 10 is Almond Joy. Number 9 is Milky Way. Number 8 is Hershey's Cookies and Cream. Number 7 is Three Musketeers. Number 6 is Twix. Number 5 is Kit Kat. Number 4 is Hershey's. Number 3 is Snickers. Number 2 is M&M's. And number 1 is Reese's. Varieties all tossed together, multiple types yeah. of M&Ms, multiple types of Reese's, multiple types of, like, uh, I, I guess there's not multiple types of much of the other ones, but. I mean, there are multiple types of Snickers. It is interesting that Hershey, uh, <clears throat> like the cookies and cream and the regular Hershey's are, are separate. But I think we have to assume that everything else is just like a, a blanket thing, right? That uh, Reese's are not just peanut butter cups, but also pieces. Yes, I think that's fair. I think that is the assumption to make. Okay, I mean, that part seems like a crime to me. I feel like those are, <laughs> I think Reese's peanut butter cups. I mean, first of all, do, do you have a preference between the peanut butter cups and the pieces? I do have a strong preference. And I would say peanut butter cups are like, are that strong preference. Yeah, the peanut butter cups are the candy. The pieces, I don't know. It's like an E.T. movie tie-in as far as I can tell. <laughs> like it, it has almost no value on its own. Um, I, so I, I will say for the purposes of this conversation, let's keep it just the cups. I think, yeah, I think that, that makes the most sense. Um, is there anything on here that you're like, why is that on here? That's got to be the bottom of our list. Uh, so not really. There's nothing that I like dislike strongly. There, I, a lot of this candy to me is like, um, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it, like, a re- like a regular Hershey's chocolate bar. Uh, is neither good nor bad. Like, it might as well not exist. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, and also, like, where... Excuse me. (laughs) But where the hell is the crunch bar? (laughs) Where is the crunch bar? I think... See, and I'm wondering if the crunch bar and all of those are, like... Well, except cookies and cream is broken out. Because I was going to say, maybe they're all in with Hershey's. Because I feel like you get those, like, Hershey's, like, variety packs that have, like... The ones that you rarely see by themselves, like a crackle. 
you know? Or a Mr. Goodbar or yeah. something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, with that just off my chest, uh, <laughs> I, so he, here are the candies on here that I uh, am like, whatever, I don't really care about. Uh, the Hershey's, the Hershey's Cookies and Cream, the Almond Joy, and I'm even going to toss the Milky Way in there, too. Yeah, Milky Way I used to like a lot, but it's really just a poor man's uh, Snickers, I feel like. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, and I, it's it, it's strange because like I, I feel like you can almost make the same argument about a Three Musketeers that it's like even a poor man's oh, yes. uh, yeah. Milky Three Way. Mus- yes. But there's something pure and strange about a Three Musketeers, <laughs> that it is just a wad of nougat. A nougat nugget, as it were, covered in chocolate. There's, I, it's the, I don't know, there's, I'll recognize that it is not like a very good candy, but it is one that I like a lot. It just feels like it should have a third ingredient. Yeah, it does not. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like the top, hands down, is going to be Reese's, um, M&M's, and Snickers. Totally. Totally. Um, we have uh, a, a, a a bucket of candy right now for trick or treaters that will never come. Um, that just has the Reese's pumpkin. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! We've run out of time. Well, uh, we did a terrible job of ranking those, Mark. <laughs> worse than worse than anything we've ever done so far. That was pretty <laughs> rough. Can I tell you? Since like we've blown this entirely, can I tell you the saddest yeah. story that um <laughs> yeah, the saddest story ever told? Okay, so it's about Reese's peanut butter cups, and it happened around Easter. It happened around Easter, and I was in Target, and uh, I bought, this was probably like 10 or 15 years ago, and I bought like two large packets of the Reese's like eggs, and I was so yeah. excited to have them. And then I brought them home. I no. unwrapped the package, no. and they were the white chocolate variety throw the whole thing out <laughs> cancel the holiday we were accompanied what? today by pianist kyle shaw a nightmare right. i can't i can't even talk about it listeners i am so sorry upsetting. for the chill that you are feeling it's not a ghost it's tragedy look i i will i will go on record saying that i don't think there's anything wrong with white chocolate as an entity white chocolate and peanut butter do no! <laughs> All right, Mark, let's get into the news. Hey, uh, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light is coming to Switch. What? <laughs> so it's the first entry in the Fire Emblem series from 1990, which has never been released outside of Japan officially before now. Um, the... To like announcement trailer for this was uh, kind of cute. It was like two people playing Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and uh, they're being like, "Who's like, who's Marth? Who is this?" And then the girl being like, "You don't know. It's this game from Japan." Uh, it is weird that she's got this like, "You don't know. It's this game from Japan" attitude because like, she from Japan? Like, <laughs> how, how does how does she know? Where's this attitude come from? Yeah, yeah. I guess she was on the early internet. Um, yeah, probably. But uh, so this is not a remake. It is the original Famicom game translated and localized for the first time. There was all cool. there was a it remake so of this cool. game. Uh, yeah, there was a remake of this game on the DS. Uh, but was uh, I can't remember. It was just called. It was just called Fire Emblem. Oh, no, okay. Fire Emblem Shadow the Shadow Dragon. Maybe. Um, maybe it it, it did have a, a subtitle of uh, Shadow Dragon. But this is, yeah, this is the original thing. There are some new quality of life features. Uh, so there are save states. There's rewind. You can fast forward through player and enemy turns. So the whole experience, you know, is a little bit nicer, a little bit more forgiving than if they just released, like, the original game localized. It's going to be available December 4th for $5.99 on the eShop. And there's also a 30th anniversary collector's edition because it is, in fact, the 30th anniversary of Fire Emblem. Um, the co- the collector's edition is pretty cool. So it's sweet. <laughs> it's a, it has a replica game pack art piece, a game sleeve, 
plus the digital download. So it has like what looks like an NES cartridge um, with the game sleeve and everything, but then the digital code that you can use because the game pack let's, doesn't actually work. Yeah. Let's pause on this for a second because the game pack itself is like translucent. You can see through it, um, but otherwise it looks exactly like uh, an original NES uh, cartridge with like the, the graphics on it and everything. And the sleeve, that black sleeve, that like, final thing of plastic i don't know what it is and it says nintendo across it diagonally holy cow mark holy cow <laughs> i know and it's funny how much that like little sleeve brought me back uh, and yeah. uh how like that's like almost like the most coveted piece for me um yep. but it also has some cool so a replica game box with the instruction booklet and map which is a lot of fun uh, a deluxe art book a mini nintendo power collectible which i'm assuming is like uh they've created especially for this and it's to me anyways i guess a reasonable price it's 50 bucks for all of that of course the rom itself is like six dollars uh but if you want this collector's edition i'm guessing you're maybe out of luck pre-orders sold out right away on best buy and gamestop no surprise and i have no many no idea how many of these will actually like show up in stores and my guess is like zero so I, I know that that is true for both um, Best Buy.com and GameStop.com, but I've also uh, seen anecdotally on the internet that people are able to walk into GameStops and do mm. like in-person pre-orders. Um, so I wonder, and I, I wonder if this is even a big part of why Nintendo is doing this in, in the first place, is to try and sell physical uh, products at their retail partners. Like, I... I, I don't I don't want to attribute the whole thing to like good guy Nintendo, um, but I think this is them trying to do a, a solid by um, their, their retail partners and really giving them something that people are going to want to buy from them. I see. Yeah. Well, I mean, not before we go too far into good nut guy Nintendo, the fine of point on this whole thing is that it will only be available for a limited time through March 2021. So, you know, like, it, it seems like one day they might just, like, flip the giant wall switch and it'll be, like, the Super Mario 3D All-Stars and Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light will be removed from the eShop for what reason? Ever? Like, I, I can understand, oh. <laughs> right, like, I can understand 3D All-Stars, sure. Um, This one, I don't entirely get why it's a limited time thing. <laughs> I mean, they're both in the name of an anniversary, right? Right. Like, right. Mario is 35, this is 30 years. Um, in both... <clears throat> for both games, I will believe it when it happens. Mm -hmm. um, I just, like, I don't really know what is to be gained from actually making the digital version of the game no longer available. Like, there's just... There isn't a history of nintendo doing that with anything else before and they could prove me wrong and actually pull these games uh on march uh, april on april 1st um but like for whatever reason i kind of don't believe it i i think like for my money uh them saying that it's a limited time release and don't make plans based on this because i could very well be wrong um but i think them saying that it is a limited release is them openly acknowledging that they are not going to keep the physical versions of this coming in indefinitely. Most other Nintendo games have a years-long production cycle where the games keep coming out and you can buy them new on shelves forever, um, effectively forever. Um, but that is just not going to be the case for these. And you know, by the end of this fiscal year, they're going to be done with the physical versions. They're also saying no more digital, but like, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I understand that move. Yeah, I, I, I don't really get it either. But I agree with you that, I don't know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Because it's like, yeah, like, it may not end up being a problem. Like, you might be able to get these after March 2021. But also don't count on it. Which is kind yeah. of, you know, like a uh, pretty aggressive sales tactic, honestly. Because you're telling people, like, hey, I, I, you kind of have to just take them at their word that it's not going to be available um yeah but for so for six bucks starting december 4th um i'm wondering how you, like my experience with fire emblem has basically been like three houses is the only game that i played from beginning to end i loved it um but one of the things i liked about it is you know like how forgiving it was and i could play it just for the story and the idea of doing kind of like the more punishing original fire emblem feels very daunting to me 
Yeah, yeah, I could I could see that. It's also like, you know, by by the the, the earliest of these games that I played were like the the GBA games. Um and by then they've really like polished um the sort of like presentation of these games where um you know all of the character sprites look great uh and when you're in like the they're not cutscenes but you know the part where there's dialogue like they you've got these big beautiful portraits of the characters um and the backgrounds and animations are all like really fluid and rich and you know even in combat you're seeing like cool backgrounds and stuff um and this like l- you know it looks like an 8-bit uh role playing game like you think back to the original uh, Final Fantasy, for example, and like your characters are standing against a black background because like that's what that thing can handle, um, and that is what this thing will handle too. Um, so I, I do think that there are some of like the niceties here that I will miss when I play this because I will play this. <laughs> yeah, I I can tell you right now, like for six bucks, like I one hundred percent am going to buy it. Will I play it? I have absolutely no idea. But um, I mean, they've they've got me. I'm a sucker. They got me hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. I am tempted to try to go into a GameStop and try to pre-order this. I think the collect like the collector's edition for something that I have like no emotional attachment to. The collector's edition is cool. Yeah, like it is a sweet yeah. package. Of course, would I rather uh, order it online? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think I'm gonna have to go into a GameStop. Well, speaking of does making things limited time, you know, uh, push people to buy it earlier, Super Data is reporting that Mar- Super Mario 3D All-Stars has sold 1.8 million digital units, making it the biggest digital launch for a Mario game on Switch, bigger than Odyssey, better than Mario Maker 2, and better than new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Um, sure, part of that is due to install base. Part of that is due to the fact that, like, these are classic games that haven't been available for a long time, and now they're available in like a single package. But also, maybe limited availability is driving demand. Yeah, I mean that it, it makes sense to me that like, even even if they're like, no, no, you know, we'll we'll keep it on there. That like the damage has been done. the the threat uh, the threat of limited availability has made people jump on it, and like everyone <laughs> bought it. Yeah, I mean, for, I, I feel like it's hard to, it's hard to separate like how much of that is fear of it going away and how much of it is just like there's demand yeah. for these games. Like whether like whether the games were going to go away in March 2021, like I absolutely bought it day one. Like yeah. I was very excited to play these games. Um, I'm sure it's a factor for some people. I also wonder how like uh, aware the general public is that there is this like ticking clock on the availability of this game. Totally. I mean, it, it, it's definitely something that just the like idiot Nintendo enthusiasts like us are aware of. Um, like you have to go into the fine print to see that these games are o- only available for a limited time. Um, so yeah, it, it makes sense that it wouldn't really be driving sales. But you know, one of the things from Super Mario, like the 35th anniversary celebration that we heard about back in August was this uh, Super Mario Brothers 35th anniversary Game and Watch, and yes. at the time they were like, "Hey, pre-orders are going to open soon," and they did in Japan and in Europe, but we mm-hmm. never got any maybe pre-orders. Australia too, maybe Australia, but we never got any pre-orders in the U.S. And it seems like we may just not be getting pre-orders. Yeah, this is a this is a scary thing. The uh the website no longer says like pre-order information is coming shortly. Um and I guess that makes sense because it comes out November 13th, That's which is crazy. like two and a half weeks from yeah. now. It's so soon. Um yeah, uh this this is of extreme interest to me as this is a collector's item that I was very interested in. Although if I can get my hands on the fire emblem thing, I'll go with that instead like i'll I'll put my collector's dollars in that bucket instead of this bucket um because you know like they're both uh you know mostly things that would just sit on a shelf and that i would like to look at but wouldn't you know (laughs) the the actual utility isn't super great for either um but yeah just just a a weird little thing here that um they don't really have a plan for getting this thing out on shelves and yeah it's it's disappointing i think because like uh even with the fire emblem collector's edition you know it sold out really quickly online but it was available and i just you know um have flashbacks to like the nes classic edition 
which we were, you know, this like is somehow worse. <laughs> this is somehow worse. Maybe not the NES. The NES was well, that was before like anyone realized that there was like the enormous demand, right? Yeah, uh, that Nintendo was not prepared to meet. Um, like that, you know, standing in line outside of a a Best Buy or Target or whatever. Um, and then traveling across or sending Sarah across town <laughs> to another Target. This one actually was a Best Buy, so that we could pick up one for you. <laughs> yeah, and, and like that would like you guys like being willing to stand in line was so you know like fortunate for me. Um, and I'm basically you know like being able to do those secure pre order for the S N S N E S Classic Edition. Um, like I don't know it. The fact that there will be no pre orders and it seems like availability of the game and watch is going to be really, really tight. It's uh, just yeah. kind of unfortunate. Agree. Um, but Nintendo has said that they'll be shipping the Game & Watch to retailers through like approximately March 31st, 2021, and will be available to purchase while supplies last. So hopefully it means it's not just like a one and done. Um, does, I... I... Will Nintendo exist after March 31st, 2021? <laughs> like, <laughs> everything... We don't have a date for a single uh, release of anything after... Uh, I mean, probably... Um, uh, Monster Hunter. Mario. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, that's right. Monster Hunter is so sometime in March. But we don't have anything past the end of March. And we have all these other things, like, ending at the end I know. of March. It, Are it they all planning just... for the end of the world? What's yeah, happening? It, it all is just, like, fueling speculation that the you know, like whatever the Switch revision is going to be revealed and will be releasing in April or May or something. So they're doing all of these things to encourage people to buy the current unit before the new one is released. Is that true or not? Like nobody has any way of knowing, but that is like all, all everything ending at the end of March is fueling that speculation for sure. Very interesting. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it it feels like such an end times time right now anyway. And just to have Nintendo be like, I don't know. Everything, <laughs> we stopped doing everything on March 31st. <laughs> Makes me nervous. Uh, the price of individual Joy-Con controllers in the U.S. will be dropping from $49.99 to $39.99 on November 9th. Uh, the price of like a complete Joy-Con set is going to remain at $80 or $79.99. Yeah, so we talked about this um, a little bit um, a couple weeks ago when this same kind of thing was announced in Japan that the uh, price of Joy-Cons was dropping. Um, but if it, when we were talking about it, I was sort of in the mindset that individual Joy-Cons were already $40 um, and that the, the Japanese Joy-Cons will come out to like $42 or something like that and they were dropping to like 35 ish um, but it turns out that that's not the case and has never been the case. Mark, what's going on here? Yeah, no, I, uh, I think you and I were on under the same impression, um, which is that a set of Joy-Con costs 80 bucks. So of course a single Joy-Con is going to cost 40, but I went back to the coverage of the Switch reveal in January, 2017 to double check. And it turns out that that has not been the case. It is a single Joy-Con has been $50 this entire time, which is wow. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, the uh, another thing that we were talking about at the time is that, like, is a single Joy-Con a product that you can buy anywhere? Um, like, they were available at GameStop. They remain available at GameStop. But I don't think they're new. I think those are all, like, previously oh, owned. interesting. Uh, possibly refurbished. Like, I don't think those are the uh, Joy-Con in the box. Usually, they're coming in, like, right now at, like, $34.99 or $39.99. So already around that forty dollar price point, um, it's this. This seems like a bizarre announcement. Like, where can you buy a single Joy-Con for fifty dollars, where you will now be saving ten dollars? Like, where, what, what, what's the world where you can do that in the first place? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let alone for ten dollars cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I, I. It's interesting. It feels like it should have always been this way. Like, it should have always been forty bucks. <laughs> but I feel like, uh, you know, I have never known a time where single Joy-Cons were easy to find, where they were, like, really plentiful. Um, I, You know, like, going into Best Buy to pick up the second pair of Joy-Con I bought, like, two years ago, uh, it was mostly wiped out, and you could pretty much just get, you know, like, the pair. And I feel like the uh, COVID-19 has just made it more difficult. Yeah. You know, like, uh, 
to find Joy-Con in stock in general. And so to find just like the individual ones has pretty much been impossible. You can it's easy to get third party ones on Amazon, like in um, but to try to get just like an, an official Nintendo individual Joy-Con is as far as I can tell, basically impossible. Um, I wonder if this uh change in price is uh coming alongside like a, a, a restocking or like they that they've like doubled down on, you know, manufacturing or something. So this product actually is available. Um, they, they were showing off the, uh, the neon red and neon blue um, in, in the tweet that uh, announced that these would be available for $40. Um, so, you know, it just, it just makes me wonder if they uh, have a plan for this or if they're just pulling a switch and uh, changing some numbers. Yeah. And maybe, maybe you're right. Like maybe they're anticipating getting more on the shelves in time for the holidays. So yeah. Be interesting yeah. That might be it. Uh, let's talk about this Minecraft Steve victory screen fiasco for a second. We'll just briefly yeah, real talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't need to dwell on it or anything, <laughs> but let's let's bring. It's been resolved, so let's bring it up. <laughs> okay, so uh, Steve for Minecraft came to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate as the new DLC character a couple of weeks ago. Uh, players immediately posted screenshots of his victory screen. Um, the character is holding a piece of meat in his hand. And due to the unfortunate positioning and the pixelated look of items in Minecraft, it didn't look appropriate. No, it looked as though he had opened his pants yes. and was holding a part of himself. Yeah. Um, which, uh, look, everyone, everyone, everyone pointing it out. Great job, guys. <laughs> great job. Real funny stuff. Man, that's great. Uh, it's been patched out in, in version 9.0.1, uh, so it, it no longer exists. Uh, <laughs> there was something that appeared to be inappropriate, and it is now gone. Mark, we've reported on it. Uh, I feel good in our role uh, in not elevating this to the point of absurdity like everyone else. <laughs> Articles on every gaming website. <laughs> No one could control or contain themselves. They but just wanted to show this image. But now we are on the record of the mm -hmm. in and part of Super Smash Brothers history. We've done mm -hmm. it. Congratulations, everyone, for being a part of this moment. Uh, Apex Legends, the free-to-play hero shooter, which was originally slated to be coming to Switch this year, but a statement from game director Chad Grenier revealed that the release has been pushed back to 2021. No real surprise at this point when that happens. We're looking at mm -hmm. you, Bravely Default 2. You don't have to be ashamed. Just go on and say it. You're yeah, not just come coming out, out this just... year. We're expecting it. Come on. <laughs> uh, Grenier said, Switch owners can expect to get their hands on Apex Legends next year. And of course, when Apex Legends does launch on Switch, they'll come with support for cross-platform play, our latest seasonal content, and full feature parody with the other versions of the game. So you have that to look forward to, but you must look forward to it. <laughs> I like to imagine that when like these PR statements are being put out, that like a person is actually saying it. Like somebody's there, like a reporter, like waiting to like transcribe these words mm -hmm. of wisdom um, from game director Chad Grenier instead of some PR sure. person like writing it and then like maybe then passing to it. him, <laughs> but like also probably maybe he never saw it before. Sure, you you don't you don't think Grenier is like. Get a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Take down my words as the light fades from my eyes. Switch owners can expect to get their hands on Apex Legends next year. Uh, so this next one is something that's totally new to me. Luigi is apparently a playable character in Super Mario Brothers 35. W wild, if true. I'm, I'm not 100% uh, convinced that it is true. Uh, I have been unable to test it for myself. Um, because uh, some of the requirements that you have to meet, I have not met yet. Um, you have to be at least level 100, and then you hold the L button when starting a match, like when it loads up. Um, the first thing that makes uh, makes me think that like maybe it's not real is it hasn't been uh, like posted on like a a Nintendo Twitter or anything like that. Uh, gaming sites are uh, reporting it based on a video that. Um, uh, someone uploaded to Twitter, and it sure looks like uh, he's able to play as Luigi, and he explains how. Um, so you have to be, uh, yeah, you have to hold hold the L button while it's loading. But if you push L before you select, uh, like on that very first screen where you can select what level you want to like put into the level pot, if you push L, it uh, changes 
which of the like starting power ups mm-hmm. you start with. Mm-hmm. Um, so like L already has functionality on that screen. So I don't really know if you like push the button to start the match and then immediately like push L as soon as that goes away. And even if that is the case, uh, that feels like some, you know, naked Chun Li uh, code kind of thing where it's like, wouldn't it be cool if this were a possibility? Yeah, you got to do something really difficult and then hold some weird buttons at a weird time. Uh, is it real? Isn't it real? Mark, I would love to know. I am currently level like 55. Um, it's it's going to be a while before I get to 100. I may never. I may never be able to verify this. I think we need you to, but I love, because I love the fact that uh, in the age of the internet, it feels like these like schoolyard rumors type stuff shouldn't yes. exist. And yet it does. To which I only have to say, L is real, Patrick. L is no, real. No, L is not, L is not real. Even 2046 or whatever the numbers are <laughs> that, that follow it. Uh, remember a couple of weeks ago when we talked about a slide in a Koei Tecmo presentation suggesting that Persona 5 Scramble might be coming to the West, um, be released outside of Japan? Well, Koei Tecmo issued its financial report for the second quarter of fiscal year 2020, and there are zero references to the game being localized or distributed outside of Japan. So, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? What do you think? Coming to the West, not coming to the West. It seems like, I mean, it seems like no at this point. Uh, I I feel like every time we talk about it, it's like one of those things where like, I could have sworn it was in like a Nintendo Direct at some point or that there was an English trailer, but it's totally, it's all just made up in my mind. That was never a thing that existed. Yeah, L is not real, Mark. <laughs> um, also, a couple of weeks ago, but honestly, actually, it might have been last week. Uh, we talked There's about no the, way to know. We talked about the Outer Worlds on Switch getting updated to version one point zero point two, and you know, uh, the, on Twitter, like a little bit before the patch was released, the official Twitter account was showing like comparative screenshots, and so we were all hoping for improvements to the game's, um, like to the game's performance. Like I've said before, I really enjoyed my playthrough of the game, but it is technically a very, like, uh, unoptimized game on Switch. Switch is not the platform to play it on. So I was hoping that this patch would uh, fix a lot of the technical issues that the game had. And it looks like that is not the case. Um, Hmm. As far, like, I was watching some comparison videos and nothing really changed. As far as I can tell, like, load times seem to be the same um the graphic like there is more uh like foliage in the world like more trees like some of that stuff that was removed from the foliage original re- foliage yes but the um uh the game itself does not seem to perform any better which is a little bit of a bummer so again can't recommend the switch port but i do recommend picking up the game on another platform if it's something that's oh. interested to you um that's weird and uh I mean, not that the patch was, like, hyped up or anything, but obviously it, it was, um, you know, uh, games are patched all the time and we don't uh, notice it, but uh, that this reached the surface and, you know, enough for us to uh, talk about it. Uh, it's weird that it n- seems to not actually do that much. Yeah, it's disappointing, I think. I think for sure. Um, but And finally, we've got another new doctor coming to Dr. Mario World. Dr. Morton wow. from the uh, Koopa Kids is arriving or has a ribbon um so let's rank him you got to figure uh, out where okay, he so, stands yeah where does dr morton go uh so i think we have to ask the age-old question is dr morton a good doctor or a bad doctor i think he so uh, on first glance he seems like he would be a mean doctor but he might just yes. be d- delivering tough love Mm, that's interesting um that uh because he you know like like a lot of these characters um does not have the uh sort of uh, like headband and reflector uh combination going on um that a, a lot of the doctors have to just sort of signify that they are in fact doctors he's not even wearing a lab coat but i think that's kind of common for the uh the koopa kid doctors right like he's just sort of got the the satchel uh with a big pill on it um and like an uh, an armband with a pill on it. Yeah, the um, armband is oddly positioned like unless it has like the pill decal all around it yeah. or on the other side, then he's wearing it's it in his so armpit. that way. Yeah. It's in his armpit. So like it feels like, you know, like uh 
if you were in like high high school PE and you had to like turn your shirt inside out because it was supposed to be like a white shirt and you were wearing right. like one with like a graphic on it where he's like trying to hide uh the pill like it's not cool or something. Sure. Well, so maybe he's been given the title and responsibility of doctor, but he doesn't want anyone to know that he's a doctor. Uh, he's embarrassed. <laughs> he's a shy doctor. Mm. So I think that means we need to put him pretty low on this list. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, right now we've got the um, uh, some of the other Koopa Kid doctors, Dr. Larry and Dr. Lemmy at 32 and 33 respectively. Um, they're just above um, the fire versions of the character and the Dr. Koopa Trooper and uh, Dr. Kamek, who, of course, you should never go to Dr. Kamek. <laughs> he is a bad quack doctor. He's going to take advantage of you. Um, so I think, uh, Morton should, Mm -hmm. he, I think he, it makes sense for him to be with like Larry and Lemmy, but above them, I think he's better than Larry and Lemmy. And I think part of that is like, I know that one of either Larry or Lemmy are crazy. I think it's probably Larry, but we don't know for sure. So we're just like lumping them together. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, Dr. Morton, I think goes above them. Um, I think that's right. That puts him just below Dr. Luma. He is our new uh, 32nd best doctor in Dr. Mario world. All right, Mark, let's close this out. That is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts if you like this episode. You can share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. We like it when you do that. Um, Also, this is your last, I'm not joking, this is your last chance to share a Mario memory with us. So email us, please, if you have not already, NintendoCartridgeSociety at at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Apebetty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. From my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying L is not real. I'm so sorry. And thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Michelle Veray. And I'm Kimberly Trung, and we are the host of Crush Fictionally, a podcast all about your favorite fictional characters from movies, TV shows, and more. Each episode, we pick a theme, curate a list of characters that we love, why we love them, and some fun facts about the people who created them. So if you've ever felt a true connection with a fictional character, tune in to Crush Fictionally on Campfire Media or wherever you find your podcast. Campfire.